Okay, thank you. I'll call the meeting to order and a roll call on Marjorie Winters. We have Jason Levy, um, Joe Campolita, um, and Don Eaton. And um, we could appoint um, Charlie Haldeman for um, 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 the vacancy. Yeah, I think we have a vacancy. All right, oh, sorry about that. All right, so um, the new business um, item 12 19. Um, 22 Iron Horse Boulevard, Sinsbury Performing Arts Center, parking lot expansion and paving, ADA upgrades and stormwater infrastructure improvements. So good evening, who would like to speak first? Marjorie, I'll start if I could. Uh, I'm Jeff Thank Shea, you. I'm the uh, town engineer representing the applicant, town of Simsbury. Uh, with me is Tom Daly, who's with SLR International, who is our consulting engineer for the project. Um, the project, uh, includes uh, parking, formalizing existing parking, and providing uh, ADA accessibility improvements for the Performing Arts Center. As you know, uh, that facility uh, also serves many other activities in the Simsbury Meadows, including Rotary Park, uh, the dog park, um, the recreational fields to the, uh, that are integrated with the Performing Arts Center, and uh, the Simsbury uh, Farmington River Heritage Trail. So there's multiple activities that are we're trying to serve with this parking facility. Uh, what the project includes is basically formalizing the existing parking area uh, with a more uh, maintainable surface, a uh, dustless surface. And um, with that are some low impact development uh, stormwater measures that we hope would improve uh, water quality coming off the site. Um, we're also accommodating future activities. Uh, we've taken some time to do some master planning with uh, plans for the Performing Arts Center to potentially expand their facility uh, and or add a separate restroom facility. However, those activities are not part of this application. It's some, just something that we're uh, looking to accommodate in the future so that the entire site works together. Um, so with that introduction, I think I'll turn it over to Tom Daly. He'll tell you a little bit more about the detail of the project. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, for the record, Tom Daly, a professional engineer with SLR. And also uh, with me this evening is Marley Antill, which is our um, one of our environmental scientists who um, will be joining me in the presentation. But uh, Tom, I, I think I have the right to share a screen, correct? Let's give this a try. I believe so. I don't believe I have it locked. Okay. Let's try this. If there's an issue. Let me know. Oh, it seemed good. What are you seeing on the screen at this time? Uh, aerial photo oh, from the perfect. Sinsbury GIS. Great. There we go. So um, obviously everybody on this call knows, uh, you know, the location, but just out of purely out of habit, I start from the beginning. So uh, I went uh, as you know, we have um, the Performing Arts uh, Center, but really, as Jeff indicated, there's a lot of other things going on uh, in this area. We have the lawn area for the Performing Arts where you can see my mouse. Uh, that's also serves as athletic fields. We have the playground. We have the parking lot to the rear. Uh, and then I really did a zoom out here to give you a real context of, uh, you know, the Farmington River um, floodplain and wetland system. So we zoom in a little bit and now we can get a little better view of what uh, really the area we're talking about. Once again, playground, Iron Horse Boulevard, main entry drive, uh, performing arts center. Uh, there's a barn located in the back. We have the dog park located to the right of the property. And just to orientate you, most of these graphics um, are north pointing to the left on these. But uh, this is the area, really the main area we're talking about is this uh, parking field here. So out there today, um, the wetlands were flagged uh, and Marley will speak to this. The wetlands were previously mapped by uh, a different consultant, but part of our work for the town of uh, Simsbury is we went back and verified all the wetlands and we concurred with the uh, wetland mapping that was previously done. So you can see with the green line here on uh, this graphic, we've taken the existing conditions plan that's in your packet, but the green line is uh, the wetland areas. So we kind of have this 
uh, lobe of a uh, large lobe of wetlands located between Iron Horse Boulevard and the dog park. And then we have on our eastern border is the uh, perimeter of the, um, the larger wetland going to the Farmington River. We have the playground, we have parking, we have dog park uh, located on the southern end of the site, and, and then the stage as uh, Jeff indicated with the uh, Performing Arts Center. What, we, what I am showing here is the uh, drainage patterns for out there today. Everything out here is so basically sheet flows towards the wetlands. There is no uh, stormwater system, both water quality or quantity on this, on this site. There's one small discharge, I think that comes from the performing arts stage that discharges here, but essentially everything just sheet flows right to the wetland edge without any water quality features um, uh, in incorporated into the plan. So what are, we, what are we here to talk to you about this evening? And, and really, uh, we've been working with the town of uh, Simsbury to, um, as Jeff said, uh, more of a master plan approach. Uh, we've had multiple calls with performing arts. We've talked to the uh, facility people, public works, worked with Jeff, and we really have had this iterative process in terms of um, the proposal. But as we come off our I'll start with the plan as we come off Iron Horse Boulevard. Uh, if you know there's two vegetated islands uh, there, we are going to remove those islands and, um, and, and replace them with a, with a um, granite paver. And those are done to, to allow better truck access through here and better visibility. I believe it's one of my things is uh, visibility. The, the vegetation has grown up very hard tall here with uh, kids or somebody going across here. We think that's an improvement, but it's really mostly we ran an auto turn for a truck movement and, um, and we came around there. We are proposing a new crosswalk, um, multiple bike racks we're proposing. So we have one bike rack by the playground, an additional pe uh, bike rack by the Performing Arts Center. And uh, as you come in, this area is, in, is uh, essentially paved today, and we will be simply just uh, what they call mill and pave. We'll be just taking about an inch and a half off that area and then repaving as is. As Jeff indicated, uh, we've dashed in these uh, two boxes here. This is representing a potential future expansion of the Performing Arts Building, and then also a uh, potential future restroom located here. As Jeff indicated, it is not part of this application. What is part of the application is we are going to put in some spare utility lines uh, to serve those in the future so we don't have to rip up the, um, the area at a later date. Also part of this plan is there's new sidewalks that are going around here, ADA accessible sidewalks that are going um, outside uh, the stage area. So those will be part of that. In addition to that, we're also proposing approximately 19 uh, handicapped parking spaces throughout the project. The largest field being here, which has direct access into the performing arts area, but we've also um, sprinkled a few more. We have four here, we've added one at the dog park and then additional ones that are um, located by the playground. Uh, we are continuing to mimic the existing drainage pattern. We're allowing water to sheet flow in the same direction, but we are incorporating low impact development techniques. And we've really, you know, every time we approach a project, uh, depending on what the client's needs are, uh, we go into a toolbox and we really take a look at what works well for the site. Uh, we did do pavement uh, coring or borings out here. And um, really a little surprising, uh, but happily surprised was we found uh, that the area had been built with good sand and gravel and groundwater was down about uh, five feet. So uh, we saw that as an opportunity to get some um, shallow water quality features in. And the way we approached it is we really have um, a couple of series of BMPs. One thing we're doing here it, what you see in blue is we are doing um, basically their uh, pervious paver uh, infiltration strips. Because this parking lot is so flat and really running at very, basically a, a very linear area, we found, we thought there was a way that we could intercept that and break the, the uh, area into smaller pieces. So what this will be is basically a six foot wide permeable paver um, 
uh, strip. These pavers are, frankly, they would look like similar to pavers that you may have in your backyard on your patio, but the gap in them is a little bit wider and they fill the gap with more of a sand base. And we've had some really great success with this on some other projects. Um, it's very stable, so it doesn't result in a tripping hazard. It can be plowed over and not uh, there. But because that, but we've also underneath those is we've put in an 18 inch perforated pipe will, which will act as a reservoir. So as the water comes across here, uh, it'll infiltrate into here. And to get greater infiltration, we created this kind of reservoir of storage that will allow the water to go in and then over time infiltrate. But we do have a high level overflow that comes out of the two systems. And then just as a belt and suspenders, we've added a oil water separator here before we go into the water quality swales. So um, we think these will be um, really that balancing of tripping. Frankly, when you go out there, it'll almost look like two sidewalk systems, but it'll be just, uh, and, but I think if you go out there during a, um, a, a, a kind of a steady rainstorm, you'll see the water kind of hit that stop and then it'll just pick up the thing. But we do also understand we still get those eight inch rainstorms like we've been seeing. Um, so on the bigger storm events, the water will continue to go to the water quality basins. Then what we did was we had three water quality basins. These basins will be designed uh, in a way that um, the water sheet flows into there. So flanking each one of those will have a gravel strip to slow down the water and promote additional infiltration um, along the, the edge of the pavement. And then they go into these basins. The basins will be seeded with uh, two species of a uh, native wetland seed mix, a conservation and a, um, and a uh, wetland seed mix. We have two species uh, seed mixes on the LA plan as shown. So these areas will, once again, and the, once again, the intent is the first flush will basically be contained in these areas and only the larger storm events will be um, overflowing to the, to the wetlands. And as you know, the first flush, that storm that happens more frequently is our focus of water quality as opposed to you know, stormwater quantity tends to focus on the 100 year storm and the bigger events, but we wanna get that storm that's more frequent and area. So by vegetating these, and they're really somewhat shallow, so we're staying above the groundwater, the bottom of the basins may get a little wet during the, during the spring, but during the uh, drier months, they're gonna probably dry out. And what each basin has just basically an emergency overflow or a high level overflow in, to, in, in a location for each one. And as I said, this, this sheet flows here and through here. So we think that, you know, this belt and suspenders approach to these water quality features um, are, are well suited. We worked with Matt Sanford and Marley to come up with a planting and then also make sure that these fit into the landscape. Uh, we're doing very minor clearing um, to get these in. They're actually um, areas. And actually the, the overall parking area um, is not expanded past the limits of the gravel and the parking areas today. We've really matched that. One thing we do note is there is a dumpster, there's currently three dumpsters located in this area here. Uh, as part of this plan, we will actually be putting those on a pad and in an enclosure on there. And that's used for uh, events. We also part of this plan, while we are um, not, this project does not involve a significant amount of cutting and grading. Um, if you look at our grading plan, you'll see that our contours are pretty close to existing. So, you know, that's a 155 contour and we're at 155. And really we did this for two things. We're trying to match grade and minimize cost. Um, but also we are, this site does fall within the floodplain. So we are showing a net positive of flood storage, which is required by the town regulations. But because the it is a minimal amount of um, earthwork here, but we do have a important water resource around our perimeter. So around the entire project, we will be circling the site with sediment filter fence, and then also straw wattles um, on there to provide uh, erosion control. But I do think that we this is a site that we only really have to deal with deal with the stormwater or the rain that hits the site um, as opposed to, um, so we don't have steep slopes. We don't really have uh, a clays or 
um, a highly uh, sediment laid or fine material. And we don't have a large watershed that is pushing through the construction site. And those are the three elements that really uh, make me take a co much closer look at um, an erosion control plan. But at the same point, we obviously have a very uh, important water resource with it. So once again, we uh, put um, several elements into the into the erosion control plan. And I do will know that uh, on the title sheet of our plan, you'll see there's a, um, a stormwater maintenance plan uh, that, that talks about how the uh, systems will be maintained over time. Uh, with that, I'm gonna ask Marley to give you a little overview about uh, the work that her and Matt Sanford did on the site. Hi everyone, thanks Tom. So I went out with Matt Sanford. This is uh, Marley Antle, I'm an environmental scientist with SLR and I went, I was on site in September of this year with Matt Sanford, uh, who's a registered soil scientist, professional wetland scientist. We were out like Tom already explained to just verify the wetland lines that were um, delineated in 2015 by the firm member um, individuals from Soil Science and Environmental Solutions Incorporated. And um, as Tom mentioned, we did find that we concurred with the lines with the wetland boundaries that were previously delineated. So this GIS figure is just showing you the results of our wetland verification. Um, in this figure, uh, north is oriented to the top of the page, top of the screen. And um, so as Tom mentioned, all of the wetlands on site are floodplain wetlands associated with the Farmington River, which is located just about a quarter mile to the east of, of the site. And uh, starting on the left-hand side to the west, wetland one, um, we walked through here and it's mostly a scrub shrub, uh, palustrian scrub shrub and emergent wetland. Um, there's some red maples in the canopy, but it's um, slightly more open. And then uh, moving to the Eastern side of the site, we have this wetland too. Um, I'm not sure if anyone can see my cursor. I'm probably not oh, controlling I'm sorry. it. I but... can do it for you, Carl. Uh, oh sorry. no, that's okay. That's, that's, um, I forgot I was in control. So. It's okay. I just realized I was moving my mouse around and probably not doing anything. So yeah, so wetland two over here on the east um, mostly consists of a palestrian forested wetland with also some emergent, emergent wetland areas. And then wetland three on the top is mostly a palestrian forested and uh, scrub shrub wetland. And um, so Matt, uh, as I mentioned, Matt Sanford um, and I were out on site and um, Matt has issued a, a statement just as of yesterday um, expressing our opinion that our opinions that there will be no direct uh, wetland impacts from this work as we can see, um, you know, the, the wetlands clearly fall um, they are outside of the project area, which um, we've shown in this red um, solid line. They are obviously in close proximity and um, adjacent to to most sides of the of the project site. Hence the um, mitigation and, and stormwater management and, and low impact design um, that Tom was just describing. Uh, the importance of that is clear with the wetlands. Um, you know, bordering the site as they are. Um, you can also see that we added on the 100 foot upland review area um, per the town of Simsbury. So much of the site is within that upland review area, but this is a previously disturbed and altered site and, and there's really gonna be no, no clearing and no work within the wetlands. Um, and I think, Tom did oh, one other thing I was just going to mention, um, just to add on to what Tom was saying, within those vegetated bioswales, water quality swales, um, there will be native two native seed mixes that are comprised between the two of them. There'll be about two dozen native plant species to the region. 
um, mostly grasses, sedges, and um, and native rushes that will be planted there. And um, I think that pretty much covers it. So please Thanks, Marley. Yeah. That, that was perfect. Appreciate that. Um, and and uh, so what I'll do is I'll just roll back to the site plan. But uh, with that, I think Marley and I, uh, that's, uh, and Jeff, unless you have some additional comments, um, that's an overview, actually more than an overview. I think it's, uh, you know, we tried to give the commission, a, obviously you know this, this site well and, and tried to give the commission a, uh, a very comprehensive uh, over, uh, presentation. But with that, Marley and I are, and Jeff are more than happy to answer any questions the commission may have. Thank you, Tom. Um, I, I'm just curious, uh, uh, comparing this site, this map that you're showing now with the one we just looked at with the, the um, aerial photo, could you show us where the detention basins would be on the aerial photo? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Mar the Marley photo, I think. Yeah, Marley's. Oh, Marley was better, there you go. Yeah. So um, the one, uh, let me see if I can zoom in, let me see if I can do this here. So one will be here, located right within this lawn area here at the edge. Okay. The second area, as you know, there's a gravel access drive that comes along here. If you go out there, there's actually a, a between the gravel access drive and the wetland edge, there's a lawn area. Mm -hmm. That will be where the other one will be. And the third one will be back here. And this is the area where we are doing some, uh, basically it's a triangular area, partially in the existing area, and then partially uh, we'll be clearing some additional vegetation to put that basin in. But once again, outside the wetland line. So that's the three areas that's that are gonna be located. All right. And then on this map, it shows the grass parking area. Um, I mean, it looks pretty dry in this area. Is, is it really grass or is it mostly just? Uh, I would say it's a little more on the dirt side is uh, uh, what I've seen out there. Um, it's, it it's the, the dog park is well used um, and, and everything. But when I've been out there, um, I've not, it's not a stand of grass as, as you would expect it to be. I, we expect it, we see it, it seems to be a lot of, um, you know, when I think grass is a loose term, I think for that. Mm -hmm. But it is mowed? No, probably, probably not. I think it's probably well, doesn't need to be. <laughs> it probably doesn't. Maybe over, you know, maybe first time. But my experience out there, it's still pretty well used. So, um, I don't know, Jeff. Do you guys ever mow that or? Yeah, I think it's mowed probably periodically. You know what I mean? Maybe every couple of months, something like that. <laughs> I, I would characterize it more as a like like a field cut. If you know what I'm saying, it's a it's yeah. a rough cut grass. It's kind of clumpy, yeah. with some exposed areas. Yeah. Tom, the other thing for clarity, I just wanted to mention uh, in terms of the the left the left side, the uh, west side here, the drainage area contributing to that basin to the left, the wetland area. It's a, it's a very small area. It is a very small area. Um... So I just wanted to clarify that because you 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 had mentioned sheet flow to the to the to the right, yeah. but there is a small area that there, drains. You, you're correct, Jeff. It's a small. There's a small break um, in the grade, and I would say it's just. You can see my my cursor is just a small area that pitches back to here, right? As it does today, but I would have to say majority. And initially, we oops, oh boy, what did I do? Um, Initially, we were thinking we just needed two basins, just the two up here. But once we got into the micrograding and saw there was a, a little water coming here, Jeff, um, we had we went ahead and added this basin, and it added some additional benefit by giving um, more floodplain compensation for the project. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, you're right. The majority of the water will be um, going in the same direction to the to the um, east. I, I, I was just wondering if you go, if you basically go a little bit north of those, of those uh, permeable pavers, you got an area that's running over towards water quality basin number three. And I'm wondering, you know, was there, if you're trying to stop some of that water from running in, why did you not put another uh, permeable paver over there? What was the thought about that, where that one blue arrow is? 
over in this area here. Yeah, yeah. You know, it 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 seemed to work well with this or it was um it probably had to do more with how the parking is laid out. Okay. And and this just seemed to be it was well suited. People would drive on this less, I hope. So maybe okay. less wheel traffic here. One thing here is we, as you know, when they get some of the big shows, we actually have, while we have handicap here, we're actually movable. We're, we actually have the signs are movable because sometimes the big, right. you know, whether it's uh, Darius Rucker or such, right. his trucks come in here and they back right into here. So that's why we saw this as more of a lower use area and this one a higher use. So that's why we kind of focused over here. So, so, so what actually will be the, the, paved surface then in that area is it going to be just full pavement you said it's like yes uh okay yes it would be uh your your typical pavement correct uh you know we we have this gravel access drive that goes to the south that will remain gravel and then there's a i think there's kind of a dirt or a gravel access drive that goes to the um east to some field there that's really the limit but you can see this outline here you know this dark line is where the pavement's going to be Okay, so, Charlie, so as, it, as that exists today, that's gravel as it is today. Right. Right. So, Correct. so while you're adding, you're adding sort of water quality uh, buffers and some flow control, you're actually paving a lot more of the space, and so you're interrupting, you know, what little seepage there might go into the ground as it is right now. To an extent, I, I, I would say that with all the truck traffic out there, and and for that, I our our visualization of the area is there was not a lot of infiltration occurring on site. Okay. But yes, there is a, you know, um, with even compacted gravel, there's a very small um, amount, but, um, and that's why we're, we're looking to do that. But I would say it's pretty packed hard today. It, it, it's pretty packed hard. So, yeah. so the, so the, so the idea, is, so by, by actually putting the, the pavement in, the only thing you're really adding to this is the runoff from the petroleum products on the pavement, which is, you know, trying is one of the things you're trying to get into the water quality basin part. Yeah, if that occurs, you know, yeah. the benefit yeah. of this uh, facility is it's not like a, you know, office parking lot where mm -hmm. it's being used all the time. Um, so, um, but that, so we weighed that with the, with the fact that we have a very important water resource next door. So, yep. so we did that, but this is one of these, it's more of an event space. So it's, um, but it's, it's, I think it's used heavily. Um, it's used regularly for the dog park people. And if you want to go use the bike trail and stuff. So, um, but you're right. Uh, we still want to, with the water quality basins, we want to capture any, any things that run off and kind of polish them before they get, you know, absorb them before they get to the, the true wetland. You're, you're right. Yes. And I know this is a, um, an area that um, I think several times the town has come to us um, for additional gravel being deposited into the, into the um, parking lot. Yeah, the gravel parking lots are a maintenance issue. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the plow beats them up, the trucks when they drop off beat them up uh, the, with the pavement is um, you know, the pavement itself does not produce, you know, pollutants. It's the, uh, it's the cars on top of them, which wouldn't change, but with the pavement, it does allow the uh, town to sweep it and plow it well um, and take care of it over the long term um, better than what they're doing out there when they're, what they're doing out there today. Yeah, I mean, anything, if you have a gravel driveway, right, you still have to top dress it every few years yeah. yourself or it gets rutted up and, 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 and even from an ADA standpoint, it's not a great service. Mm -hmm. Question on the uh, paver infiltration thing. Is there anything that is going to be done or can be done to discourage people from driving over them? Um, I know you said you kind of hoped that people wouldn't drive over them too much. I just, I know people... And if they pull in on one side and when they're leaving yeah. the space is open on the other side, they're going to drive right over it. And I don't know if there's anything that can be done to maybe discourage that without really affecting the water flow off of it. Um, well, they are built for highway standards. So we uh, actually, we did a great project over actually in Somers, New York, um, because that's in the New York city uh, water supply watershed, they require it. And um, it's really there. And that's what we tried to find a traffic bound surface that if somebody did run over it, we would not lose that quality we were trying to get. Um, 
so and it's it's the, the philosophy is not much different than you know permeable asphalt but um it's durable and so okay. if somebody does drive over it we won't be because we started to look at more gravel you know more like an open stone and that's yeah. where we actually had a conversation with jeff and public works and they were concerned that would the same thing you just probably were indicating once you start gra- driving over gravel you turn it into such a hard surface it doesn't work anymore yeah i yeah. mean I, yeah i just so it, it will hold up to it will people who inevitably drive through it yeah we'll question. pick we'll pick a paver that is suited for um highway or roadway traffic okay. and snow plows and those so it's supposed to be flush so the plow can go right over the top of it without damaging it okay the other question is maybe a little discussion for the commission later um the gravel access road over on the south side i seem to recall that that was never supposed to be a road um and you know i i know there's a history to that there's a history to that that i'll look into but it's outside of the purview of this permit but yes okay yeah just maybe the commission can discuss that if there's going to be more projects down here and, and one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons why we're going to re- change these islands out um, to allow better truck circulation off of Iron Horse Boulevard and there'd be less pressure on the gravel access drive for okay. truck access. Yeah, that's definitely appreciated. Um, I'm good. All right, Marley, um, I noticed in your report, you mentioned several, there were several um, invasive plant species. Are any of these detention basins going to be in areas where the where there are those, um, I think it was multiflora rose and um, autumn olive and the Tartarian honeysuckle. Can you show where those might be? And Marley, would you like me to go back to your aerial? Uh, sure. Oops. Um, yeah, so Marjorie, I, I, that's something that I um, forgot to add in when I was presenting the area where the areas where the stormwater basins are going to go, um, especially on the east side um, of the of the existing um, parking area. Um, those are more of a, I guess, they're more of a um, buffering woodland edge before you get into the wetland area. So there was a good deal of invasive vegetation, like you mentioned, multiflora rose, autumn olive, honeysuckle, winged euonymus, um, common mullein. Uh, so a lot of woody and uh, herbaceous invasive vegetation. And I think one benefit of the bioswales is that we're going to be clearing some of this very invasive woodland edge and replacing it with native herbaceous material and um, once that, you know, these, uh, once the native seed mixes become established, they will hopefully prevent some um, return of, of those invasive species, which is important, you know, buffering this high quality wetland area to the east. So what will be the main what will be the maintenance routine for the um, water quality detention areas? So we um, we would expect those to be, well, first of all, um, as, as Marley said, they're more herbaceous uh, materials. So we want that to be more the wetland meadow, those type of things. So we're typically, um, uh, we would typically say they get mowed once a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might be not when I say mow, it might be just somebody going out there with a weed whacker in, in the fall and kind of knocking it back. And the really the purpose of that, and it's no different than if you had a perennial garden in your backyard. The big thing is we really are going to try to um, knock down any woody vegetation or non. And if we can get a robust um, herbaceous layer, and Marley, correct if I'm wrong, but if we get a robust uh, herbaceous layer, it really puts out those other species that we're not trying to go. So it's really probably um, a heavy weed whacking um, once a year, once every two years. And then um, if anything starts to, um, you know, if there's some areas that need to be uh, uh, hit with additional seed to kind of get that going, um, it, it, it's done like that. But 
we don't expect there to be a heavy maintenance requirement. And that was part of it. We didn't want to propose something. And even with the pervier, previous pavers, we understand that these towns are, uh, you know, sometimes maintenance is already stressed. So we stretched uh, to the limit. So we're trying to develop a plan and working with Marley. And actually we had conversations with the um, public works folks to come up with a, a plan that hopefully has minimal maintenance. I think the, the bigger part of maintenance is get that vegetation established right in the, so that maybe Marley, maybe it's, you know, the first two years you're really monitoring to making sure you're getting a good herbaceous layer. Uh, yeah, I would say that that's right. Yeah. And then the oil water separator is, is, you know, they'll have to clean that out once a year. All right, do commissioners have any other questions for the applicants? All right, I know this is a site that the um, commission in the past has had discussions with the town about um, uh, various issues that have come up at the site. Um, and we have had a site visit of the, um, of the area. And I think it might be a good one for us to familiarize ourselves again. I talked to Tom before the meeting um, Tom's going to go back um, through our, our, our minutes and, and look. Um, the commission in the past has had a lot of questions, and there was a checklist that, that they requested you know, the town to um, of issues that they wanted the town to address. So I think it might be good to, um, to put this on, you know, to, to schedule a site visit for this area so we can familiarize ourselves. I think this is an improvement for the, the water quality, but I still think we should. We should go out, look at the site, get a good feeling for it before we move forward. And as I mentioned to Marjorie, if this is going to be a group activity, it needs to be notified to the public that we'll be meeting out there because it is a, a meeting if there is a quorum. If you'd like to go out there on your own and take a look and report back to me or Marjorie, that's a separate situation. You're more than able to view it as a public entity. But if there's any group meeting, um, I just need to know that where you'd want to meet, when you want to meet there, so that I can inform the public that there'll be a meeting and a site visit by the commission, because the public needs to be welcome to those meetings in order to um, be informed, just as we have a meeting this evening. So um, if that's something that you guys want to schedule now, or if you schedule it, after this meeting, you need to inform me that we are going to have a date and I need to inform the applicant, the town and the public that you will be meeting on this date, this time. Um, it's kind of like a special meeting, but I just need to inform the public if we have a quorum present. Even if there's two of you, I would prefer to inform the public that you are meeting. If it's just you on your own, that is perfectly fine for you to do, but it's up to the commission to decide how they'd like to handle that. I don't know. I don't, we haven't had a site visit in a while. This was it's um it's an usual occurrence. It should be a usual occurrence. Um, I was not at the last one. I don't know if I was on the commission or not. Yeah. Or if I was. I, I mean, I I can't. I I don't know if any many of our commissioners have been on the site visit. Um, I know Jim Morrison's been. Um, I mean, I've been to the area. No. Used it, but it would yeah, be. I mean, I could provide the checklist. I can make an open in inquiry to you. We can inform the applicants. We can inform the, um, the applicants, um, engineers and um, um, professionals, and we can inform the public if you'd like to meet. But as I said, if it's, it, it's normally a quorum, but if, I, if there's more than two of you there, I want the public notified. It's just better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, I'm on vacation next week, so I'm pretty flexible. Usually we have to do it sort of, it's, it's, you know, it's going to be getting, I mean, we could do it probably. If you can do it during town hall hours, I'd be much appreciative of that. How, how does that work for me? Some of us, that's fine. Um, yeah, uh, we have a late evening on Mondays. I'm here until 7 p.m. on Mondays. It gets dark. Oh, I know, but I'm here after work hours. <laughs> it doesn't get dark until about 6.45. That's when baseball practice. All right, well, we're coming up. I think it was, um, all right, so if we do it, um, Oh, I can't do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I can make most things work next week because I don't have to be stuck in Hartford until God knows when. 
I can be I can be fairly flexible. I would just have to verify, but I can if I can make it happen. I'm more concerned that the public knows that you're there. Yeah. How, what's the notification? How long before for, for the to notify the public? I've got to put it out in the public, and um, I'd have to check the regulations on public. It's been a long time since I've done one too. I don't know if I need a public hearing notification in the paper, but I do have to post it on the website at a yeah. minimum. That's a, that's more than. Um, we have our, our net. If if we receive this this evening, we have until November sixteenth, I believe, off the top of my head, because of election being in the first week of November. So we have plenty of time. Um, there's no need to rush. Like I said, you don't have to decide on it in a public forum. You, if you schedule it, I just need to inform the public, the applicant, and their professionals that you are doing a site walk, and that way everybody's informed that you will be there at that certain time. So if you have to do a query, we can certainly pull it and see, but um, if you want to put it on the record this evening, that would be favorable. All right. Um, yes? Would anyone object to doing it? I think um, if we did it on, um, let's see, it's going to turn, we're, we're going about off daylight saving time. I think it's on the 7th. It's the 7th of November. I believe you're correct. Yeah. 7th or 8th. Could we do it before our, well, we don't have a meeting on this. Yep. Um, just be wary of the election on yeah. the 5th. Or the, the Could November 2nd. Could November 2nd, thank you. Would it be possible to do it on the um, the second, even though we're not having a meeting? Could we have it at the um... um if it's a, if it's accommodable if it's a, if the commission can accommodate that, um, the public will be out and they'll have their time to be elected. Um, I don't see a conflict. We don't have a meeting just to allow our commissioners to uh, vote. Um, I don't think it's a burden on the public that there's an election at the time that you'd be meeting out there. I think they can accommodate that considering we're in the vicinity of the town hall and election yeah. areas. So if we did it at, um, five, well, five o'clock, it's getting a little dark, but, um, um, I'm off on election day too. So whatever time that time how about, for me. Uh, would that work for Joe? Would those, who, would those who are interested with that well, date work for I'm going to be, I'll be honest, I'm probably going to be tied up most if oh, not you on are. election yeah. day. You're running. And, and yeah. Joe? If well, you... I'm and not only running, but, you know, we're, you know, kind of working the day. You know Joe, what I mean? As, as I mentioned, um, so, if you'd like to meet me down there at a sure. certain time, you can I mean, schedule. I'm, with... I, I'm actually um, very involved with the PAC. So I've, I know the area fairly well. I'm, I'm comfortable with what I've seen. Um, because I'm down there at the area a lot. Um, because like I guess, you know, I volunteer. So um, I'm comfortable um, either just meeting Tom on my own or walking it myself with, you know, the plans here. And, um, and if the rest of you want to go as a um, site walk, um, that, that's fine by me. And any, any checklist that's provided will be provided to all, mem right. all people present. So sure. as well as the public. So. So right. that would address the things that the um, the commission had in asked, the past. Um, to look in at. the past, I mean, we yeah. should be focusing on the project at hand, but you're also right. looking for things other than that. Yeah. I understand that later. There, you're going to see what you're going to see. But if you, for a site visit for the application at hand mm -hmm. is appropriate, um, we can set a date, and those who show up will show up. Minutes will be made, and we can move from there. Sure. If anybody would like to schedule a personal visit or go on their own, they certainly can. If you're scheduling a visit with myself, I will try to coordinate with either Mr. Shea or um, uh, Dan Gannon, who's also present here on the meeting, so that somebody from the application can be present if there's myself requested to be there, that both myself and the applicant are present and minutes will be made for those personal meetings. Otherwise, so if, you're, if go, it's a public area. Feel free to visit. Yeah. So if we if we schedule for four thirty on on election day, um, who would be available to, to attend? Jason and anyone else? I I can't. I'll be. Oh, in day. Yeah. Um, Don, you probably, Don, would you be working? No, I I'm available. You're available. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so we got three. Um, Jason Berman. I I would be able to get I get off at five, so I could get there really shortly okay. right around oh, five might right. might be able to get out slightly early 
we yeah. can include you in that um, meeting. And then if there's anything that you have missed, we could bring you up to speed. If it uh, is short, I can stick around for you to. So the idea would okay. be we'd, we'd look at the application and um, and, and have the public, um, you know, notify the public for that. Yep. And then we would, um, if there are any other things that are outside the scope of the of the application, we can look at those things too. Yep, it'll be official meeting. So okay. um, I'll run it as such for November 2nd at 4.30. Okay. And um, Jeff or Dan, if you uh, would like to um, be present, you can. Um, applicant uh, professionals are welcome. But as I said, it's just a site walk. We'll be looking at the application as proposed. Um, they may inquiry about some previous um, questions, but that is off table. Um, as far as this um, application is concerned, um, it may add some requests to performance from the town, but that's outside of that. Yeah, yeah we're available whenever the commission wants us to be there for any, any site walk. Just let us know when. We'll make that happen. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. It's, uh, all right. Well, now we just need to make a motion to accept or to how you want to go about it. Because it's um, a receipt tonight, so... We'll receive. All right. Do we have a motion to receive? I'll motion that we receive the application. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All right. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you. I don't even remember how many people we have in the room. I'm like, five? No, six. Six today. <laughs> All right, so we've got um, old business. We have none. And, uh, oh, did I do? Oh yeah, now general commission business, minutes. Yes. Were there any changes or additions to the minutes? None, we, um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, I'll move that we uh, approve the minutes. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right, any opposed? Okay, good. All right, agent actions, none. And correspondence, anyone have anything to report? I have been attending the um, um, Master Forest, no, Master Woodland Management course. Um, this is a year long course um, to discuss how to manage woodlands and um, turn in a project at the end. Um, so we'll see what that goes, but a lot of, a lot of site visits to a lot of different places around the state. Um, did you like, the, did you like the class? Um, it's interesting. Okay. Um, yes, I'll leave it at that. And, and, um, it's, it, I mean, it's a lot of, um, knowledgeable people presenting their positions. Um, and Cora, let's see, other, other conservation business we have. Oh, Joe, you wanted to talk about. Well, I, I thank you. I, a, a couple of things. Um, I just wanted to report to the commission that um, uh, it, it's nice living in a town where they do put their money where their mouth is. I know they, at the Board of Selectmen, they uh, voted to proclaim, uh, declare Simsbury a pollinator friendly community. And we've um, met with um, Orlando and um, we're talking about some projects already. Um, and that's, I, I think that's great. You know, I, I think, you know, sometimes in some places these things are declared and sort of nothing happens and it's, it's more of a showpiece, but um, it, it's, it's the, the town is taking it very seriously and, and um, uh, the Simsbury pollinator pathway and, Mar you know, Marjorie as well have, have met um, with Orlando. We've, we're talking about some some projects and a, a bigger project in the spring. There'll be more to come on that. Um, so I'm I'm very excited by it. I think um, it's it's good for the community um, to see that um, Simsbury um, um, does take this very seriously and in, in, in creating these natural habitats. Um, because it's good for the community and obviously good for the, the, the environment. So um, it's, it's, it's exciting. Um, I did ask Tom to upload um, a couple of articles um, that um, I had read um, regarding um, 
towns that have um, either uh, one town is, I, I mean, there are several towns have done this to actually restrict um, or, uh, you know, the use of uh, gas leaf blowers. Um, and also in New Haven there, they, they've just started that process. Um, and you can, you can read the articles. I don't know if you had a chance to do it because I sent them the time yesterday. Um, but what, what prompted me to bring it, want to talk, discuss it here with the commission is in New Haven there, they are just starting this process and it was sort of their municipal version of the conservation commission that has, has um, researched the issue and brought it forward to their, their aldermen to, to try and uh, have a public meeting to, to discuss it and possibly, um, you know, modify how, how leaf blowers, gas leaf blowers are used. Um, they're, you know, a major source of pollution, noise pollution. Um, and also um, there is uh, an issue where, uh, you know, the, um, um, the, the, there's a lot of um, um, cancer producing type particulates, you know, for the people who use them. And that usually are, you know, landscapers and uh, people who use them every day. Um, so, you know, I think there's a number of issues there that, that we should talk about and, you um, you know, see if as a, as a commission that uh, this is something that uh, that we would like to pursue further. Um, and, um, you, you know, I can certainly find, I have more research on it that I can certainly share with the commission. And, you know, that may be something that um, um, we we want to place on the agenda for our next meeting and, and, and uh, really dig into it. Did anyone else have a chance to look at the... I, I looked real quick. And, um, you know, I wasn't sure what, what, you know, I figured it was like conservation committee business. Um, I did see some inaccuracies in there. So it sort of, I don't say poisoned the whole mm -hmm. argument for me, but, um, you know, a jackhammer is not 120 decibels or a hundred. It's more like 120. A jet airplane is not a hundred decibels when it takes off. It's 120 or 130. <clears throat> so there are some factual issues that I saw right off the bat that sort of made me skeptical about some of the other arguments that they were trying to make. That was my initial reaction to it. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, part of it is their newspaper articles. So it was, you know, written by a reporter who might not be expert in that area. I mean, I understand what you're saying. I, I think um, it's a good start to the conversation. Um, you know, uh, uh, as far as, you know, um, us digging into it, I think we would want to do a little bit more research, actually a lot more research into it, because I think there is some good data out there um, regarding um, um, the amount of pollution, um, the, the harm to the individual using them, uh, things like that, um, that, that uh, you know, uh, we should talk about as, as the Conservation Commission, so. I, I, I did, you know, sorry, Marjorie, but okay. one of the other articles, you know, one of the, the, the thing of, about Newton, that's the one I read most. Um, they're going to ban, as, if I can recall correctly, they're going to limit the amount of gas blowers to one per household mm -hmm. and then just ban it between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, it sort of took the teeth out of any type of ban because most of the you know you use it in the spring yep. to clean up before memorial day and after labor day to get rid of the leaves so right. to me it's almost seems like an empty gesture that doesn't really have any you know real impact i mean leaf floors are used around the you know all year long but it just seems that it's a right. it was almost like a feel-good thing it's like we're doing something but you're not really doing anything you're not banning right. them you're not you know, they're yep. not used in the summertime a lot. So, one, one well, the, yeah, you're, sorry, Joe, go on. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking, what, there, is a, there is a movement, not, not targeted on the um, leaf floors, but um, it might be something the conservation could get involved with. Uh, it's the Leave the Leaves um, movement, where they're trying to encourage and educate the public that the leaves are a valuable resource. That, you know, you mow them over your lawnmower. And, and put them into your garden. It's not something you bag up and send off site because it's a, you know, it, it improves your soil quality. And it also is a great area for the, um, 
what they call the detritivores, the little insects that eat up the leaves, which become food for the birds. Um, so it might be something maybe we'd have less interest in um, blowing and removing the leaves if we could you know, convince the public that those leaves were valuable. So it might be another way of going about the same thing. Right. Jason? So my thoughts on it, um, I really wouldn't support a proposal to ban leaf blowers. I certainly recognize, you know, everything's moving towards electric anyways. I would be supportive of, you know, an education, you know, initiative by us. Maybe the Board of Selectmen wants to join in, other conservation-minded boards um, about educating people about possibly, you know, switching on their own or reducing the usage of the gas ones. You know, the leave the leaves thing I think is great. Um, like I said, you know, before the meeting, I just run mine over with a lawnmower until they're ground into oblivion. Um, you know, I just, I, I really don't see banning something. I mean, people are going to do it anyways, most likely. Um, and it's just going to make people angry and less likely, in my opinion, to, you know, consider switching. Whereas if we educated people and did an initiative that way, I think we'd move the needle a little more. I'd like to add to that because um, I know that the previous town that I worked for, um, one of the major players in the DPW um, grounds crew um, had a great article in the newspaper about how their department has kind of tried to hybrid themselves and switch over to partial electric and stuff. And I'd, if we're going to put this on the agenda, I'd like to get some information from him as well. Um, he and I worked together on quite a few planting projects in town for conservation reasons. And while they know that they can't go 100% gas free in a, in, a, in a full use capacity, considering what grounds they have to cover and what availability of equipment and costs are, um, they're doing a, um, a proposal for a slow switch over and what they can and cannot do. But I think he would have some really good information that I might be able to grab from him. So I'll make note on that as well. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I mean, you know, I, I have an electric leaf blower and a gas leaf blower. Um, and quite frankly, the electric one does not have anywhere near the power. Um, I know there's battery operated ones. I have a plug in one, so I'm limited to where I can go with it. Um, you know, I, you know I, I just don't think, you know, the technology is quite there to, you know, say, hey, this is now your only option. You know, I, I think educating people to, where practical using electric yeah i i agree push, too I mean, I there, there's there's a guy across the street that has an electric push mower and it takes him like two or three hours to cut the grass and i'm done in 45 minutes so or less than that there's also I, i've also seen um down at town forest i've seen someone there was a, a um i don't know if it's town staff or state staff and they've had the big backpack leaf blower and the amount of noise coming out of the city, but it's training of the staff because there was hardly anything that they were blowing, but it was just something you could do for hours. <laughs> and it was, it, it kind of ruined a nice walk in the, and, and, walk and, just, in the and just bear in mind, you're, 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 um, you're looking at health safety. You're not looking at noise uh, pollution because um, the town does not have a noise ordinance, just so you know. No, but it, it was, it was, it, it, you know, I kept thinking that that poor person probably oh, yeah. could find something better to do. So that's a that's a training thing. Yeah, too. we. I I was a landscaper for quite a few years, so yeah, there was always that new guy who always got the weed whacker and the blower job. Yeah, yeah. So and so we don't, time we don't have a noise ordinance. No, we do not. So I could blast have a party go until 3 a.m. with loud music and yep um you might yeah the police might show up and ask you to turn it down just to be a friendly neighbor but yeah there is no noise ordinance oh, interesting yeah um i this is my third town and i've lived in two others so that's five um this is one of the few i only lived in one other town that did not have a noise ordinance. so maybe the north knows of no Noise, noise ordinance is the way to go. I would be careful. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's a possibility. No, right. there's, we are, you know, we, we 
while Simsbury seems like a large town, we have um, very few issues. So there's not a lot of uh, manpower, let's just put it that way. So enforcement becomes a, okay. um, okay. an issue. Um, just just at a sidebar. All right. Well, all right. Things to discuss. We can um, perhaps we can get some more information on leave the leaves and um, you know promote electric leaf blowers or something. Like that. Yeah. Well, 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 let's put it on the. I'll put it on the, put it on the agenda. We'll, we'll, we'll have more discussion. Agenda. Yeah. I'm, we can we can keep talking about it as long as you it. want to, and we'll just yeah, see, you know, see, like, how, see how it how like could Kind of like we did, like what to plant to feed the birds. You know, like if we can, you know, get something going and maybe get, you know, a little more support from the other boards of like, hey, you know, maybe consider an electric leaf blower. You know, and this is all, all stuff. Reasons. This is all stuff good for our web page. And I just got a, I got off of a virtual network and they put me on a on a on a hard computer, so I got a I got a desktop and now I'm having trouble accessing all the stuff on the web page. <laughs> so I'm fighting through a lot of a lot of things here. And I know one time I tried to find this information on our website. It's, it's not. I've got it someplace. I got to move it around again, and I can't. I can't. I can barely post an agenda at this point. So I'm. I'm getting there, Margie. Right. I'm working. Right. Right. You just keep piling it in. I got a folder with all of it in there. <laughs> all right. All right. Good. Good. Because we need. You know, we might even want to consider some paper. You know, things to hand out to people. All right. Yep. All right. Um. So no other. Any other conservation business? All right. Then, if, if there's nothing else to discuss, do I have a motion to adjourn? A motion we adjourn. All right. Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> I, I saw right. Jason's hand. I saw Berman's hand go up first. <laughs> All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye